Nearly 400 years after the death of Queen Elizabeth, we finally know what killed her in an era where assassinations, murder, and infectious diseases were rampant. Queen Elizabeth actually faced a self-inflicted death. She wore a mask of beauty, but beneath it hid the shocking cause of her demise. What was the reason? Why did she choose death over trajectory in life to no stay till the very end of the video? Queen Elizabeth. When one envisions Elizabeth I, an exquisite portrait often comes to mind. A slender figure adorned in magnificent gowns, crowned by an extravagant halo of white ruffs. Born on September 7, 1533, she ascended to the thrones of England and Ireland in 1558, marking the culmination of a tumultuous succession game within the House of Tudor. Her 44-year reign, known as the Elizabethan era, is celebrated as one of the golden periods in English history, transforming England into a formidable global power. In the late 16th century, during Elizabeth's reign, the prevailing standard of beauty was characterized by a pale complexion, considered a mark of refinement. However, beneath this timeless beauty lies a complex and tumultuous story. Elizabeth's ascent to the throne involved the transfer from her young brother Edward VI to her zealous half-sister Mary I before finally reaching her. While her reign brought prosperity and expansion, Elizabeth's later years were overshadowed by personal losses, fading beauty, and the silent specter of depression. Despite the relentless pursuit of maintaining her youth, a trait tied to the beauty standards of her time, Elizabeth became a captive of her own image. She dismissed marriage proposals with indifference, choosing to remain unwed and bound only to her country. Elizabeth's dedication to her image led her down a path of potentially perilous beauty regimens. Each day became a public performance, an opportunity to assert her status and vitality. However, the relentless pursuit of beauty took its toll and depression began to seize her. The dichotomy of Elizabeth's reign, marked by political triumphs and personal struggles, paints a nuanced picture of a queen who, despite her external regal splendor, grappled with the internal challenges of maintaining power, navigating societal expectations, and facing the relentless march of time. Depression. By the 1590s, Elizabeth's health started to decline. She survived smallpox in 1562, but was left with scars that she covered with heavy white makeup made of toxic lead. Over the years, she suffered from tooth decay and loss, possibly due to sugar in her diet, and the lead makeup may have led to chronic lead poisoning. The death of several of her close friends and advisors in the late 1590s and early 1600s, such as Robert Dudley in 1588 and Sir Walter Raleigh in 1618, seemed to have taken a significant toll on her. She reportedly fell into melancholy, likely a form of depression, and began to show signs of both physical and mental breakdown. Her failing health was marked by various symptoms including rotting teeth, pus-filled glands and swelling of her hands that was so severe her coronation ring had to be cut off. Elizabeth's Chalk White Face Queen Elizabeth I, renowned for her heavily layered makeup, donned a mask of white lead and vinegar known as Venetian ceruse to conceal the scars left by a severe bout of smallpox. Surviving the disease, she faced societal expectations regarding her appearance as a queen. However, behind the facade of beauty lay a perilous secret. Venetian ceruse, a blend of white lead and vinegar, was Elizabeth's chosen makeup, reflecting the beauty standards of her time. In the contemporary era, the hazards of lead exposure are well known, encompassing health issues such as anemia, weakness, and, in extreme cases, death. Yet, Elizabeth's beauty regimen extended beyond her skin. To remove the thick layer of makeup, she likely used a mixture of eggshells, alum, and mercury. Mercury, a highly toxic substance, can lead to memory loss and mental instability, potentially contributing to Elizabeth's declining mental health in the later years of her reign. Even her lipstick contained the deadly ingredient cinnabar, a mineral rich in mercury. Elizabeth's dedication to maintaining her image through such toxic beauty practices reveals the lengths she went to adhere to societal norms and uphold the regal splendor expected of a queen. The dangers inherent in her beauty routine add a layer of complexity to her story, highlighting the sacrifices she made to project an image of power and prestige. Death On March 24, 1603, the inevitable transpired as Queen Elizabeth I succumbed to a combination of cancer, pneumonia, 
and the gradual poisoning from her toxic makeup. The causes of her demise included a twist of intrigue, as her loyal servant, Elizabeth Southwell, claimed that the Queen's corpse emitted noxious vapors and even exploded in her lead coffin. While Southwell's conversion to Catholicism after Elizabeth's death raises questions about the credibility of her reports, the Queen's final days were marked by a hazardous operation suggestion. In an attempt to address the effects of wearing her coronation ring for 44 years, continuously, Elizabeth was advised to undergo a risky operation to remove it. The ring had embedded into her flesh over time, posing a potential risk of blood poisoning. Unfortunately, time had its say, and Elizabeth passed away before the surgery could be performed. This narrative underscores the double-edged sword of the Queen's pursuit of eternal beauty. The harsh treatment of lead, mercury, and vinegar deteriorated her skin, leading her to apply more makeup in a futile attempt to preserve her fading youth. Elizabeth's relentless vanity, fueled by a desire to defy the passage of time, ultimately played a role in her own decline. Last Days Elizabeth's struggle with numerous ailments remained no secret within her court. In the privacy of her chambers, a procession of royal physicians attempted various often bizarre treatments to extend her life. Despite their efforts, the Queen's condition continued to deteriorate, prompting whispers of her imminent demise. Stubborn and proud, Elizabeth refused to acknowledge these rumors, maintaining her regal composure even as her health crumbled. Leeches were applied to rebalance her humors, a prevailing medical belief of the time. Despite the pain and discomfort of these procedures, Elizabeth put on a brave face, perhaps as much for herself as for her anxious court. In a peculiar twist of events, despite her failing health, the Queen adamantly refused a post-mortem examination. Speculations arose that this decision was driven by her desire to preserve the eternal image of youth and strength, ensuring her immortality in the minds of her subjects. Legend has it that the embalming process after her death was not properly carried out, resulting in an explosion in her coffin. While this may seem shocking, it aligns with the preservation methods of the time. Some attribute this event to the buildup of gases due to decomposition, exacerbated by her cosmetic lead poisoning. Lead poisoning. What do modern-day scientists say? A modern-day autopsy carried out by home office pathologist Dr. Brett Locker has concluded that it was pneumonia that ultimately claimed her life. This shocking revelation was unveiled in the second episode of the Sky History series Royal Autopsy, where Professor Alice Roberts helped investigate the last Tudor ruler's cause of death. For many years, the cause of Elizabeth's first death at the age of 69 was unclear. Suspicions of blood poisoning were rife, but she explicitly stated before her demise that she did not wish a post-mortem autopsy to be conducted. The investigation revealed that the Queen was so obsessed with maintaining a youthful image she risked using white makeup, a fashionable trend of the time that could have proved dangerous. This was indeed confirmed by Dr. Lockyer, who said that the Queen had been suffering from chronic lead poisoning due to the toxic metal in her makeup, leading to substantial hair loss and rotting teeth. Despite the significant health issues, Dr. Lockyer pointed out that these weren't the cause of her death. Investigation Dr. Lockyer emphasized that Elizabeth's demise might have stemmed from oral infections, causing excruciating pain and impairing her ability to talk or swallow. While these health challenges were daunting, it was ultimately pneumonia that claimed her life. The swelling in her left hand hinted at a failing heart, necessitating the removal of her coronation ring, sparking speculation about sepsis development. Elizabeth, frail and emaciated, suffered from lung fluid accumulation and an ailing heart. Dr. Lockyer unequivocally attributed her death to bronchial pneumonia, with heart failure playing a significant role. The lung infection potentially triggered blood poisoning, exacerbating the strain on her heart. Navigating Queen Elizabeth of his twilight years, we are reminded that even the most splendid reigns succumb to the inevitable sunset. Her narrative serves as a cautionary tale about the deceptive allure of vanity and the relentless march of time. That's all for today. Hope you enjoyed the video. Share your thoughts about the video in the comments below. Make sure to like, subscribe, and press the bell icon for all future updates. See you next time.